factory. The industrial estate and facilities of chemical plant number 16. Once rented out illegally to the Terror Group Corporation, it is now the site of numerous firefights between Bayer and USEC operatives. In the wake of the chaos, a reclusive and clandestine gunsmith has established a secret forward operating base. The remaining inhabitants of Tarkov call him the Mechanic. But he is not alone. It is rumored the Terra Group Corporation used this forsaken metal coffin to develop experimental drugs. In the darkness, monsters do dwell. Hello everyone, and welcome to the place that gives me the most thrills and chills just in time for spooky season. Factory isn't my favorite map, but we can always dress it up as a good time with a little Tarkov lore and movie magic. I have multiple raid breakdowns for you today, and a little bonus clip on another map if you stick around until the end. As you can see, I like to jump out as quickly as possible since the raid timer on Factory is the shortest of all, 20 short minutes. I want to use all my senses and proceed with caution. All player spawns are nearby in this close quarters map. I'll be completing two tasks, Postman Pat and Chemical Part 3. Here I am picking up the Postman's letter first since I have a great spawn for it. It's hidden inside this poor soul's jacket. You'll see a theme of quick stops to listen to the in-game directional audio and short sprints to reposition. I need to move quickly and draw as little attention to myself as possible. Now that I've recovered one task item, this raid is already worth applying some patience. You can hear the enemy PMCs throwing grenades and scabs chirping wildly. I'm currently facing the direction in which I need to move for the chemical task inside the offices. I haven't heard much commotion that way, so it's time to move. Looks like I spoke a little too soon about a lack of commotion. Now I definitely need to double down and keep my aggressive pace. Let's go back here a couple times to check my peaks. I am ads and ready to fire down this hallway that's known to have PMCs holding angles and patiently waiting. I know I have the advantage with the right hand peak, but I'm not properly playing against the inertia system that slows me down as I change directions. I should be rotating my fingers from W, A, S, and D on the keyboard to keep my player movement in a circular motion. This prevents the slowdown of inertia and allows me to quickly check the other end of the hallway for threats. Okay, time to go back and watch that one again. A lot of luck here with a shot that hit this PMC between the eyes, but I had the element of surprise and he didn't have time to react. My reaction time was excellent as I move across and out of sight as quickly as possible. Point fire is an awesome alternative to ADS when in firefights. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. I proceed to kick down the wrong door, but quickly correct it and pick up the chemical inside the filing cabinet. A little pre-fire here to surprise anyone that might be tucked in the corner. Always clear your corners and secure the entire room before you loot. Continuing with the same pace, with my eyes and ears open, I close this door to jam up anyone that might try to push me from that direction. After a successful player kill, I always assume there are more in that same squad and my location has been called out. Repositioning after a PMC kill and taking a defensive stance is key. I pause here for a few seconds to listen and repack my magazines. As you can see, I always carry one full stack of ammunition in my secure container to quickly resupply. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Wait, wrong holiday. It's time to extract at gate three. Oh, my God. 
All right, let's break it down again. Another lucky shot on the scav. My movement dropping down off the ledge puts the reticle right where I need it. Now here I want you to listen closely. There's another scav behind me putting pressure on to get inside this door. As I approach, you can hear the player camping the extract on the other side of the wall shift and reload. Regardless of the audio cues, I'm always going to jump through these doors in case of campers. This movement saves me from a lucky headshot. And now our dance begins. I'm pre-firing around these corners to keep the pressure on. Luckily, he has a bullet hose and only 17 round magazines. His weapon is hard to control and puts him at a disadvantage with frequent reloading. With a full magazine, I commit to my position and crouch down for better recoil control. He makes the grave mistake of jumping as he pushes and I cut him down. Now it's time to extract. Who's camping? Come on now. I quickly heal myself since I have a heavy and a light bleed. There's no time to fully recover or perform surgery on my limbs. In my haste, I hit the wrong key and accidentally leave behind his dog tag. This firefight may have garnered a lot of attention to any PMCs remaining or player scavs that could have spawned in. I reload my last full magazine and carefully check my surroundings as I enter the final extraction room, pre-firing the corners in case of yet another camper. And of course, closing the doors behind me to impede anyone sprinting to intercept my departure. Ah yes, a successful extraction. Two PMCs and two tasks down, it's time to turn them in and push my luck. When playing in a squad, I like to hit these little factory runs if I die early on in the raid with my buddies. They're very quick, and tasks like stirrup are perfect little challenges. Stirrup requires you to kill three players with only a pistol. Looks like we got the same spawn, so I jump off at a quick pace, checking my mags and attachments along the way. I look past this forklift for any PMCs rushing in before heading to the offices. I sit here for a while, listening in, waiting for some sign of where I can rush off to to get into a firefight. Let's fast forward here through this boring part. I've been hearing some footsteps, but it just sounds like scabs patrolling. There was a bit of gunfire, but it stopped almost as soon as it started. I couldn't figure out what direction it was in. I know there's players afoot. Just a little more patience here. I'll check their mag. Oh, oh shit. Uh oh. I hear lots of player movement and fighting inside the office corridor. That groaning sound after the gunshots is another player dying. Time to engage. Yes, Ghostface, we're trying to get our factory pistol, well, not factory pistol, but pistol kills. I have a tendency to freeze up at moments like this. In hindsight, I should have actively been creeping towards the end of this hall a lot sooner. If a player rushes to open the door, they will have the advantage of lean peeking to minimize their body as a target. In short, my fear has left me extremely exposed in the middle of this sky bridge. Right in the offices. I forgot it opened this way. Ah, uh, no! Well, as they say, all is fair in love and war. GG's, guys. Let's check the rewind. I completely botched opening this door, and it cost me precious milliseconds on my ambush. Their helmets saved both of their lives. Sometimes we Tarkov, other times we get Tarkov. Let's see what other clips we can find. Pro tip, if you hear jumping like I am here, it's 100% a player controlled character. Nice quick shot to the back of the head. One kill down. 
Just like our friend in the first clip, this bullet hose of a gun is not getting the job done. If I was a better player, I would have switched to semi-automatic at the beginning of the raid. Too bad I'm a filthy casual. I love a good firefight just as much as the next guy, but sometimes a good ambush is needed to get the job done. My opponent here has traveled all the way across the catwalk right outside the offices and onto the skyway to close that door. He shoots through the door in an attempt to catch me by surprise. I get jumped by a scab and then head to a more defensive position. Yes, some ammunition can penetrate surfaces. Don't forget the wall bang, kids. Different spawn this time. PMCs can spawn down this hallway and the shorter hallway to the left. You can see I'm carefully clearing the area, expecting some player resistance. If you already haven't noticed, there is some in-game commentary occurring from time to time. I'm live streaming on Twitch during all these raids. Come check me out and drop a follow if you can. Getting cracked in fact. In fact, we are cracked. I'm trying to get into Tarkov forever, but no one ever has the time to teach me. Nice to see and meet you, my bro. Hey! Nice to see and meet you too, dude. But you just coming in here from browsing on Twitch or I'm a bitch. The Discord links are in my bio. Well you got a nice community of streamers. Actually the guys I have deafened right now who are on a shoreline raid. No. No. Just just wondering. No, I, I don't need it. All of those guys are new to the Discord, you know, just like came in like you or saw my YouTube videos or saw Tony's streams and we are now all playing together. So you're a member when you say you are, please join us. We'd love to have you. Good point there, Twitch Nate. Don't just follow me here and on Twitch. Join us on the Discord. Links are in the description of this video. Well, the previous death was unfortunate. That gent was sitting in the classic spot above the stairs by the offices waiting to ambush. GG's. He got the job done. This is the last clip on Factory. One more big lesson to learn while trying to PvP with only a pistol. Here I have an FN98, one of my favorite sidearms. These catwalks above the Factory floor are an excellent way to ambush players walking up from the basement areas. There's going to be some quick editing cuts to speed this clip up. I'm trying to open doors to cause confusion while using the advantages of fast movement since I'm not weighed down by a heavy weapon or armor. I'm pausing to listen, but too much waiting will allow my opponents to sneak away to extract. I have to stay moving. I'm hearing faint noises, probably pivoting as someone is adjusting to listen to my footsteps. Again, my fear is causing some hesitancy. I don't have any advantage with my kit, and anyone down below is already aware of my presence. This is an easy death to analyze. The enemy had the clear advantage. I didn't even see him on my screen. My left-handed peek compared to his right-handed angle gives him a clear shot with his high rate of fire weapon. These factors, along with having no armor and throw in a little game desynchronization, led to my speedy demise. All right, time for the bonus clip. Yay, back to the daylight. As we let our pupils adjust, we allow the hair on the back of our necks to return to its rightful place. I know my last commentary playthrough was on shoreline sniping, so I didn't want to overdo that too much. This clip is just too good. I'll link the last playthrough video in the description if you need a reference. Go ahead, give it a watch. And it's also the first time I'm debuting some squad play. 
We're only a duo, and I'm with a man named Deputy Doof. Doof is a streamer and a good player. I've seen him pull off some excellent PvP, but since I've been sniping to get my Punisher Part 4 kills, we're both kitted for ranged engagements. I have an SV-98 with LPS GZH ammo and a simple 9mm sidearm. We heard a grenade as the clip starts, and that was one of many popping off as we made our way to the Shoreline Weather Station. We're going to try and third party these gentlemen who've been in a heated firefight. I apologize for the sound quality of my in-game voice. This was before I upgraded my setup to a better mic. Doof comes in clear enough, but try not to focus too much on what I'm saying. It's not worth it. I'm also recording with G4 software that has a variable frame rate. This causes the sound to have a delay from within the editing booth. And don't worry, I've started to use the right recording software so this doesn't happen anymore in my videos. This clip is just an old one, so please just bear with me. It's worth it. I'm calling out my position to the deputy since he's trailing behind me and flanking out to my left. He wants to engage close quarters with his secondary firearm while I snipe. As you can see, it can be very difficult trying to peer into the tree shadows. I'm scanning for any slight sign of movement. We're gonna do a little fast forwarding to speed this up. More signs of a heated firefight bodes well for my task completion. Yeah, I see him. Where? I'm in position and Doof is closing in on the area I have sighted, but from the other side of the hill. He spots them and calls it out. He's going to engage. I can't visually see any of this, but he's putting pressure on them to reposition further down this strip of trees. Yeah. It's imperative I minimize my silhouette against the bright sky backdrop behind me. Staying prone is my best bet. All it takes is one look my way and I'll be badly exposed. Desperate to find an angle, I'm shifting around and eventually standing up since my prone body movement is obstructed by some of these rocks. There. We've spotted our prey. I patiently wait as my weapon sway places the reticle just below his helmet. I want to compensate for my high ground positioning, knowing from this distance my bullet will fly straight and true. Beautiful. Let's take another quick look at that. Sorry, I had to mute that audio. The sound of the shot is so desynchronized, it ain't worth it. Now it's time to try and flush out the rest of the enemies. But this doesn't end like our first factory clip. Doof dies shortly after this easy snipe, and I'm left alone to search the woods for survivors. I eventually find myself flanking down below and get annihilated by a bush wookie. Ah, Tarkov. Sweet, sweet Tarkov. It giveth and it taketh away. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching until the end. If you can, hit the subscribe button, drop a comment, and let me know what you think. You can suggest another map or task you like to see, or just show some love. Until next time.